News Channel 15 presents The Film Reel, the talk show where we discuss everything going on in the world of movies and television with hosts Bryce West and Ian Lloyd. This is The Film Reel. Hello and welcome into The Film Reel, the talk show where we discuss everything going on in the world of movies and television. I am Bryce West alongside uh, newcomer Ian Lloyd mm -hmm. here today. Uh, this is a brand new season of The Film Reel. This is not something that I really thought was ever going to happen. Uh, whenever we ended the series back in 2021, I kind of thought that it was the end. I pretty much would, was at peace that I was the end, but uh, we're here. We're back. Uh, we've got an all new summer season for you all. We've got a lot to talk about. Ian, is there anything you would like to say? I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to contribute. And I'm happy to tell you all that my opinions are going to be way better than Bryce's. So that's, we'll a, let you decide. that's a high bar to live. Yeah, well, you decide. Uh, but uh, with that being said, we're going to head straight into the box office report for this week. Coming in at number five is Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, starring Abby Ryder Fortson, Rachel McAdams, and Kathy Bates. When her family moves from the city to the suburbs, 11-year-old Margaret navigates new friends, feelings, and the beginning of adolescence. The film brought in $2.5 million, dropping 23% from last weekend. For the film reel, I'm Ian Klingler. Coming in at number four is Evil Dead Rise, starring Lily Sullivan and Alyssa Sutherland. A twisted tale of two estranged sisters whose reunion is cut short by the rise of flesh-possessing demons, thrusting them into a primal battle for survival as they face the most nightmarish version of family imaginable. The film brought in $3.7 million, dropping 36.6% from last weekend. For the film reel, I'm Micah Henson. Coming in at number three is Book Club, the next chapter, starring Diane Keaton, Jane Fonda, Candace Bergen, and Mary Steenbergen. The film follows the new journey of four best friends as they take their book club to Italy for the fun girls trip they never had. The film opened with $6.5 million. For the film reel, I'm Tegan Roll. Coming in at number two is the Super Mario Bros. movie starring Chris Pratt and Anya Taylor-Joy. The film follows the story of the Super Mario Bros. on their journey through the Mushroom Kingdom. The film brought in $13 million, dropping 29.9% from last weekend. For the film reel, I'm Mallory Burton. Coming in at number one is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, starring Chris Pratt, Jakuti Awuji, and Bradley Cooper. Still reeling from the loss of Gamora, Peter Quill rallies his team to defend the universe in one of their own, a mission that could mean the end of the Guardians if not successful. The film brought in $60.5 million, dropping 48.9% from last weekend. For the film reel, I'm Drew Pounson. It wasn't a very busy weekend at the box office last week. The only uh, movie that opened within the top five was Book Club, the next chapter, opening uh, at around uh, six and a half million dollars. Uh, Ian, what, what are your thoughts on this on this top five? I mean, I mean, we, we've got Book Club, but it, I mean, it opened this week and it opened within the top three. It was number three, but it didn't open very well. I, honestly, I, I think this will probably plummet down in, within the next week, especially with uh, Fast X, which we're going to talk about later today, um, uh, coming out this weekend, and uh, other things are going to be moving around. So, so what, are your, what are your thoughts on this top five? Well, right now we're in the calm of the storm, uh, calm before the storm, for uh, just all these summer releases and stuff. And there's going to be so many blockbusters coming out soon. And so... Book Club, the next chapter, is, suffice to say, a more quaint film than <laughs> yeah. anything coming out soon. And uh, I think this is mostly for its specific audience. It's not going to draw a lot of people, but for what it's doing, it's not doing half bad uh, for such a small budget. But I do think it's definitely going to get booted down quite a bit for the next uh, weekend. Right. I mean, we, we have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. We're also going to be talking about that later today. Uh, still at number one. That's probably going to change <laughs> with next week with Fast X. I don't think it's going to change as much as as you think, though. Uh, the, the Super Mario Brothers movie, I mean, it's a billion-dollar film. I think it's going to be in the top five for... Uh, quite a few more weeks. Um, I, I, I think we've, we've still got at least two or three more weeks with uh, Super Mario Brothers in the top five. Evil Dead Rise, I mean, it's an established franchise, uh, uh, but it's not a franchise that has been historically 
well in the box office. So it is nice to, s to still see it up here um, after it released uh, quite a few weeks ago. And Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. First of all, what a great title. <laughs> I mean, that, that is just absolutely hilarious. But, but I mean, I, I had never even heard of this movie before we uh, brought the show back. <laughs> so, so um, interesting uh, to see it in the top five there. But with that being said, we're actually going to be introducing a new segment here on the show called the Box Office Showdown, where Ian and I are going to uh, try to predict as close as th that we can uh, the top five for um, the, the next weekend. So uh, I'll go ahead and say mine, uh, and then you say yours. Um, if they're the same, then uh, uh, we're going to figure that out as we go. Uh, so, uh, so number one, I'm obviously going to have uh, Fast X. Uh, it's opening uh, this weekend. Uh, it's a huge franchise. It's made a billion dollars before. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's going to actually earn as much as uh, previous installments, uh, especially with the poor reception of uh, Fast and Furious 9. Uh, and then this movie isn't really gaining that great of reception either, so I don't think this movie is going to open as high as one might think, but it still is definitely going to open at number one as a new Fast and Furious release. Uh, number two, I think, is going to be Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. It's still a, a massive film. It's already gained uh, $500 million worldwide. Um, I, I think it's going to be one of the highest grossing films in the multiverse saga for the MCU so far. Uh, it's going to come nowhere near Spider-Man No Way Home. <laughs> But I think I think it could be uh, it could get to second place. Number three, I have um, uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie. It's already made a billion dollars. I think it's I think it's gonna like I said I think it's gonna stay for a while. Um, uh, number four, I I, I have uh, Evil Dead Rise uh, actually staying uh, in number four. I I think. Um, it is an already established franchise, and two of the other films that we see uh, in this top five are. They, one of them isn't a part of an established movie franchise already, and then the other has such a niche audience that I just don't think that it's going to uh, do very well in this next weekend. Uh, with that being said, number five, I do have Book Club, the next chapter, dropping from three to five. I, I, I think it could still stay in the top five uh, for this next weekend, but I, I think uh, it's still going to make quite... Not a lot of money at all. Uh, so, Ian, uh, would you give us your top five? Um, ours are pr pretty similar. Uh, definitely Fast X is going to be number one. Um, I do think, I agree, it's going to drop off after this. Uh, I don't think uh, many people are going to um, be really receptive to this one as the series is like coming to a close. Uh, Guardians 3 is still going to hold strong at number two. Mario is going to be at number three. People are still coming to see that. And I do think Evil Dead is going to drop off this okay. top five. Like, off the completely? Off completely. Okay. I think number four is going to be Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. Because I think this is a quaint little film that is uh, going... It's a coming-of-age film. It's based off a Judy Bloom novel. And I think people are going to come back and see that. I think it's going to... I don't know. I think it's with these slow weekends, I think it's going to go and get to number four. That being said, I think Book Club is going to drop down to number five. And um, after this, it's probably going to be done for the weekends. Okay, so as, as we said, this is the box office showdown, so there are going to be some stakes to this. So every week we're going to have a uh, sort of punishment for the loser of each week uh, for the box office showdown. Since next week we're going to be talking about The Little Mermaid, we're going to be uh, forcing uh, uh, the, the loser to watch Disney remakes uh, and review them here on the show. Uh, so definitely stay tuned uh, for next week to, to figure out who the loser is and who has to review some not-so-great uh, Disney remakes. So... Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not really looking forward to that one either, <laughs> but, but yeah, with that being said, we're going to take a quick break. And after this, we're going to give our reviews for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 and Fast X that, uh, comes out this weekend. Uh, we'll be back for more. News Channel 15, winner of the Intercollegiate Broadcasting System Award for the nation's best community college TV station.
I am Jordan Crow. I'm a registered nurse and director of case management here at Wabash General Hospital. I started my journey with Wabash General Hospital in 2011 and a part of the health occupations program. After that experience, I decided I did want to pursue nursing. What matters the most to me about working at Wabash General Hospital is the flexibility that it allows for me to live and work close to home. It allows more time with my family and also allows me the opportunity to serve the community that I grew up in. Come see the Tri-State's largest display of high-quality affordable furniture and home decor at Timberlake Furniture. With a warehouse spanning more than eight football fields in length, you'll find what you're looking for and can take it home with you the same day. Shop the latest styles from the name brands you know and trust, all at the lowest prices anywhere. Check out our huge selection of top-quality mattresses from Sealy, Tempur-Pedic, and Stearns and & Foster. And shop our closeout mattress sale going on now. Timberlake Furniture, so your house feels like home. Welcome back into the film reel. Right now we're going to be reviewing Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 as well as Fast X. We'll go ahead and start with the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. This is, I mean, just such a fun film. I mean, yeah. we're coming off of Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, mm -hmm. a pretty horrible Marvel movie. <laughs> um, so, nothing. I mean, this was just an absolute breath of fresh air. I mean, this is the the sort of <laughs> finale uh, mm -hmm. for, for this, this uh, team of guardians but it, it is it almost felt like we kind of got a guardians of the galaxy movie and a rocket raccoon movie kind of in the same film and usually i don't like that but it kind of it worked here yeah um you know i i, I think they they did the flashbacks with rocket really well in this while also having the fun guardian stuff so um we're not we're gonna try not to get into like huge major spoilers but uh ian what are your thoughts uh overall on guardians of the galaxy volume three well like you said it's not only a breath of, breath of fresh air for like this current iteration of the mcu but it was a breath of fresh air like the very first guardians when that came out um off the tales of thor the dark world and i think that this series has been extremely consistent um through all three movies, just the best MCU movies so far. And with this one ending, I think um, I don't really have that much hope for uh, what's to come in the future <laughs> for the MCU, because this just left such a great impression. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of interesting because this is, so we're supposed to believe the final Guardians of the Galaxy film where there were supposedly not going to get any more. James Gunn, the director of this film, probably the best director in the MCU right now, is leaving Marvel to, to uh, be the head of uh, DC uh, films, DC studios. Uh, so he's going to be directing the next Superman movie. So they're losing one of their best directors after this film. So it's kind of like, yeah, I mean, this film is absolutely ama amazing. It's probably my favorite film in the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy, but it's also <laughs> like, like, Marvel's losing James Gunn, so it's just kind of, it's kind of like, I don't know how I'm supposed to, like, care about Marvel really anymore. I mean, like, I, I just absolutely love James Gunn. He's one of my favorite directors, period, not just with superhero stuff. Um, so, I, I, I don't know. Like, it, it's going to, it's going to be very interesting. What, like, what are your thoughts on this, be, like, Guardians, now that the, the trilogy is supposedly over? Do you think that this is up there or is the best MCU trilogy so far? Oh, no doubt. It's the best one. And I would even like to say that us as filmgoers, like last decade, this decade, we've always been trying to chase this idea of the new original idea, the trilogy like Star Wars or Indiana Jones. And like we're always trying to like see like, oh, what's the new thing? What's the new blockbuster that's going to be like this genre defining thing um, that uh, will go away from like reboots and remakes and all this nonsense. And I think in this current landscape where everything is mostly based on like, or, like IP uh, properties that are already like seen before, um, I think putting this trilogy into the MCU is the like current analog we have to a modern day Star Wars. And not to say that the new Star Wars is are bad or good, but those are definitely trying to replicate 
what came before. Yeah. This is doing something new in a system that is kind of constricting with its uh, creative potential. And I think James Gunn did a incredibly like perfect job uh, making a satisfying trilogy um, that just works in this huge franchise. Yeah. I think this definitely could be in contention for one of the best films in the multiverse saga so far, anything after Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, I, I think... Uh, I mean, no way, Spider-Man No Way Home and Black Panther Wakanda Forever might have something to say about that. Uh, but, I mean, it still was an absolutely wonderful film. I don't think this will be the end of the Guardians characters. Um, I mean, we do know that at least uh, one uh, character will be returning according to one of the post credit scenes. Uh, and uh, the other, uh, the mid credit scene teases, uh, I guess, without spoiling anything, the the new team of guardians. Um, so, uh, because there are some guardians that will not be returning, um, at, at least a part of that team. Uh, and so this really does feel like the finale of this team of guardians. Um, now, whether or not they make a Guardians of the Galaxy volume four with the new team, or if the new team just appears um, in the Avengers uh, movies, uh, we don't know. But, uh, but yeah, I think it's nice to finally see a definitive conclusion uh, to a group of characters, uh, we don't really get get that a lot in the MCU. Maybe with, with like like I think Iron Man three gave a pretty decent ending. The to problem Iron with that yeah. was Tony Stark was still here in yes. the uh, universe, right? Even though his arc. Was but there. I feel like if you just stop watching at Iron Man three for some reason, um, like like that could serve as a good end. Mm -hmm. uh, Captain America: Civil War doesn't really serve as a good end to Captain America. Thor: Love and Thunder. I mean, that night might not be the end, but it doesn't really serve as a good end to Thor. Um, you know, uh, none of the other trilogies really serve as good endings because it's this grand uh, uh, cinematic universe, so they appear in all these other films. But with this, it really feels like they're finally able to cap off these characters really well, which is something that I really enjoyed. But let's move on here now to Fast X. Um, this is the first part of a three-part Fast X movie thing. I don't really know what to, to refer to. Like, I don't know. It's just so weird. Um, yeah, so, I mean, this is Fast X Part 1. Um, and you know, it was a fat, it, it was a fast and furious movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it, I mean, it's absolutely absurd. Yeah. You know, so now that we're done talking about Marvel, we can actually get to oh the, uh, my gosh, are you kidding me? Important movie series. Um, so fast and furious is a that is great franchise. I had no idea he was wearing that underneath. So with this 21st century, this is the most genuine series of films possible. <laughs> It's just the perfect uh, escalation of starting from like a point break knockoff to now we're doing heists, now we're going into space. And for most of this, it's grounded in the characters. And it's not based on anything else. It's just a new story. But the, the worst thing about this new movie is that it might be the worst in the main series of films. It is just not as good it does not reach the same highs and it just it's a mess where in the world did you get that shirt you can find anything online <laughs> that is amazing uh well uh wow uh <laughs> that, that, that is holy cow okay anyway so uh, yeah i mean so uh, fun fact i had never seen a fast and the Fur furious movie uh before uh, Fast X. Uh, you know, I watched this movie so we could review it for the show. Um, I did not see any of the prior Fast and the Furious uh, movies before. I, I think I might have seen clips. I might. I, I think I've seen the Fast, uh, the Furious Seven trailer before. I think I've seen the Fate of the Furious trailer and the uh, Fast Nine trailer, but those are the only pieces of, of anything Fast and Furious I've ever seen is from the clips from the trailers of the movies that I have not seen. Um, so going into this film, I mean, it was absolutely ridiculous, you know, but, you know, I didn't hate it, you know, I mean, it was fun enough, you know, um, I mean, the, I, this isn't really a spoiler, but... At some point, <laughs> at some point, Dom, played by Vin Diesel, 
picks up a car with just one arm. <laughs> it rules. And <laughs> it is the most absurd thing ever. But I, I thought it was pretty funny. Um, Brie Larson uh, is, is um, at, at the beginning, I didn't really like her character that much. But then later on, uh, she felt a little bit better. So not really sure about that. Um, what they did with John Cena's uh, character, we're not going to get into any like actual story spoilers, but what they did with John Cena's character um, in in this is is really really unexpected and weird. Uh, mm -hmm. I I that is uh, because I mean the, the, this character was just introduced in the last film, uh, and and uh, his story arc throughout this film feels super, super odd. Uh, I was wondering what your yeah. thoughts are on that. So coming from F9, where he plays the villain, now he is with the good guys, and it's a completely different character. Um, it is unexpected, but it is like the thing we kind of want to see John Cena play in these movies. Just this uh, big, goofy, lovable guy. Um, the things they do with him don't really feel earned, but... yeah. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm a, I'm along with the ride, so that's how it is these days. And I will say, I want to highlight maybe the funnest part of this movie, which is Jason Momoa. Oh, I didn't even mention. Villain. Yes, Jason Momoa as, is having the funnest time playing this yes. character. He is an absolute delight. If you're gonna go see this movie, this is the reason you go to see it. He is just eating up the yeah. scenery. Wonderful like, every scene. Yeah, yeah. I, I would love to see Jason Momoa as a villain more. Um, you know, I mean, there's talk about him wh whether or not he should continue to play Aquaman whenever they revise the DC movie universe, or whether or not they should he should play another character, uh, a more sort of a villainous character, Lobo in in the DC universe. Um, I think he should play Lobo, especially after watching this film. Um, Jason Momoa was an absolute treat as the villain. I mean, honestly, definitely the best part of the film was yeah. Jason Momoa as uh, God. What was his name? In the film, I'm a fake fan. I can't oh my remember. Gosh, I can't remember his name in the film either. But but Jason Momoa's oh, character in this Dante. Film. Dante, that's it. <laughs> but thank you. Uh, but yeah, I mean Jason Momoa was absolutely amazing. But yeah, I mean if, if look if you're like me and you haven't seen any of the Fast and Furious films, there's absolutely no reason to go watch this. Do not start here. If you're already invested, <laughs> yeah. go and see it. But don't. Don't get your hopes up too yeah. high, because this is definitely a low point in the series that I hope picks back up, but we're so close to the end now, yeah. we don't really know. It's a messy... It's a, a three-part movie, though. It's a three. The action is terribly yeah. shot, but the characters are still true them, to themselves and to the people around yeah. them, but it gets muddied with how messy this movie yeah. is. Well, and I think part of that is due to it being a three-part movie. I mean, I mean, the, the story definitely ends to where it's just like, okay, <laughs> you know. Um, I, but honestly, it, it felt it was kind of weird because it felt like there was multiple moments in the film where I was like, oh, okay, they're gonna end it here on this like cliffhanger mm -hmm. or whatever. Like it happened like like four or five times, and then all of a sudden it just doesn't end, and I was just like, okay, we still got more. Let's just say it's not that satisfying of an ending. Yeah. As uh, one complete But ending. there's we're getting Fast X Part 2 and Fast X Part 3. Uh, Allegedly. So definitely uh, stay tuned for that. With that being said, we're going to take another quick break, and after this, Kane Jones is going to uh, give uh, his uh, picks for franchises that have gone on for too long. Let's take a look at that later on. For over a century, the First National Bank has been here, serving our local communities. We're proud to still be locally owned and managed with friendly customer service from people that you know and trust. We're here to support our neighbors, investing in our communities. We're proud to provide the latest in digital banking technology, serving as your complete financial partner. Visit us online at fnba.bank or stop by one of our convenient locations in Allendale, Mount Carmel, Carmine, or West Salem today. The First National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. We're your friends, your neighbors, and we support our community. For over 100 years, we've been here, leading the way in community service and innovation. We are Mount Carmel Public Utility Company.
College doesn't have to start at an expensive school far away. You can save money and be close to home at Wabash Valley College. Many careers only require a two-year degree or certificate. Or get your general education classes out of the way and transfer to a four-year school. Wabash Valley College has programs in high-demand careers such as physical therapy assistant, advanced manufacturing, marketing, business management, nursing, and radio television. To find out more about Wabash Valley College, go to iecc.edu slash wvc. Now, more of the film reel with Kane Jones. Hello, everyone. My name is Kane Jones, and we're going to be talking about franchises that need to end. And first, we're going to talk about Fast and Furious 10. Um, this is going to conclude the Fast and Furious franchise, and I think it's about time. I mean, 10, 10 films is a lot. You know, um, there's only a few franchises out there that have done that. And, you know, when you go 10, that's like a milestone. And I think that's a good place to end it. And also the whole the whole thing with, you know, we're at a point where, you know, they started with the cars. Right. And we're to the point where we're we're like saving the world and stuff. And I think it's like that storyline is just over. And I think it's time to end that. Now, with that being said, moving on to another one that I think has exhausted the storyline, another franchise, um, Transformers. Um, the, they did uh, three. Michael Bay directed uh, three. There was three. And, uh, you know, I thought the trilogy was fine, but then they had to go more. They had to go more. And, you know, for all you Transformers out there, I'm sorry. I think you, they, it got to the point where they switched up the actor, the lead actor in it. And I, I just think that that storyline has also ha ha uh, been exhausted as well. Um, timed in that. And my third franchise that I have to talk about um, is Pirates of the Caribbean, another beloved franchise that many of you guys out there love and adore. Um, and I think they're to the point where they've exhausted that as well. Um, you know, everyone, a lot of people out there love Johnny Depp, who starred in the, in the franchise. And um, even him, I feel like he's to the point that they want him to pri re reprise the role. But, um, you know, just pirates, treasure hunting, the whole thing. I think it's time to go with that as well. Um, with that being said, another franchise that I feel like has gone on, and, and, and again, I, I kind of have mixed reactions with this uh, franchise, um, so I'm kind of back and forth, but James Bond, Ian Fleming's James Bond, um, it's iconic, and the last um, film that they did, um, No Time to Die, Daniel Craig gave a fantastic performance. But they, it, it, and this is a spoiler if you've seen it, but it's been out long enough. You should see it already. Um, it, uh, he subsequently, they kill him off in it. So really, they, they could end it, um, but they're, all, they're looking for uh, another actor to replace him. That's the golden question. Who's going to replace him and be the next Bond? Um, but since they killed him off, they, they could just stop and not make any more. Um, you know, so that's one where I'm kind of conflicted on. Um, now sliding in to... A, another franchise which is Harry Potter another beloved franchise that um, again has several films uh, um, that came from the books uh, so, you know a films and you know it's just gone on way too long and now I think they're looking to do a TV show and just and start thinking about a reboot and stuff and I think you know it's it's time to end that as well I mean I, I feel like that's gone on too long as well and um, that that needs to end as well. And so uh, those are my picks for uh, film franchises that need to end. Thank you, Kane, for that. And yeah, I mean, he mentions Fast and the Furious. I, I definitely think that is probably an example of a franchise that has gone on for way too long. It's, it's ending with, crumbling yeah, between their fingers. I right mean, now. it's ending with Fast X, but I mean, there's going to be a Fast X part two and then a part three. So, I mean, yeah, technically this is the end, but they split it up into like three different movies. Uh, according, according to Vin Diesel, at least, it was only supposed to be two parts. And then now it looks like it might be three. I don't know. It's definitely very odd. And then, uh, yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, that's an interesting one because, like, yeah, I feel like Disney definitely wants to make more, uh, and they would like to have Johnny Depp back, but I don't think Johnny Depp's ever going to come back to that role ever again. Uh, but, yeah, I definitely think the Marvel Cinematic Universe is an example of a franchise that perhaps has gone on for too long. Yeah. Uh, just due to, like, all the stuff uh, after Endgame, a lot of it not being that great. But, yeah. So, that being said, thank you all so much for watching the film reel. We'll be back next week for our coverage of Disney's The Little Mermaid remake. Uh, stay tuned that for that and more. Thank you all so much for watching.